So good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining Coffee Conversations with Trace Andy. It has been such a fun summer so far, and I'm really excited about this guest. This is someone that I don't know. I've been following her journey um, for a while now, at least probably at least a year, um, and that's led into her DMs, and she said yes. And so I am really excited to welcome Dr. Kelly Morgan to Trace Indy. Thanks so much for coming. Thanks for having me, Jillian. It's a Yay. pleasure. Oh, I'm so excited. So let me read all the things because... Okay. Um, <laughs> so I became acquainted with Kelly when she was at IMA, it will never be new fields to me, um, the, former, so, the former associate curator of American art at new fields, IMA. Um, but you are from Detroit. You got your PhD at UMass. Um, what I really liked, and because I went to burnway.org and they just had, I went to lots of little places to look, stuff, mm -hmm. but um, I really liked how they described, you're a critical race cultural historian. And I wanted to read for everyone what that said. And it's, you examine and theorize the ways in which American artists, objects, history, institutions, both challenge and verify the system, the systematic mechanisms of anti-Blackness in the U.S. All of that, <laughs> as if that isn't enough, right? Yeah, <laughs> like, it's yeah so... that was that was actually language, you know, over I would say Jillian the last like six years. Okay, that I finally kind of came up with to to really structure what I do. Yeah, um, because what happened in Newfields had been building, you know, at some of my other, you know, um, yeah, or some of my previous institutions, some of my previous work. And friends of mine, you know, white, black, you know, Asian, <laughs> you, yeah, know, that 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 you need to be able to explain, like you're doing yes. so much more than just specializing in American, in American art, Kelly, like you need to, you need to find a language for it. It was my friend, specifically my friend, Daniel Tucker, who's the, um, he is the chair of the MFA program in social practice okay. at Moore College of Art in Philly. And I was like, you know, I didn't really think much about it. You know, it was just kind of like, ah, I just kind of yeah. do what I do, whatever. Um, and then I got to Indy and I was like, um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, no. Right. I need to, I need a structure for this. I need a language. Yeah. And so that's what I came up with. Yeah. Oh my God. It's so good. So explain, explain to the, to the listening and viewing audience, you know, what do you do? What is your, I mean, how do you put that into practice? So what is your, <laughs> your your life now right now so I do I do a, a series of things yeah. right I always say like I wear various hats so I'm what's considered to be like a true interdisciplinarian right so I'm a curator I'm a teacher I'm a writer I'm a public speaker right? <laughs> you know I'm an author I'm a trainer like I do all these different things and a lot of that comes from the fact that I was trained in African-American studies yeah so I was trained in a very interdisciplinary way so I have a command of art history, sociology, history, psychology, cultural studies. Um, and I've created this sort of like mismatch, right? <laughs> right, I like to call it like a gumbo, you know, or a quilt of things. Delicious. Um, yes, and that allows me to do all those things at once, right? So I'm curating a show right now for um, the National Academy of Design, their 190th um, annual. So that's yeah. the curatorial part. I'm working on some stuff with the Clay Studio in Philly as well um, in terms of exhibitions. Yeah. I was just named um, professor of practice and the interim, not interim, I'm sorry, inaugural director of curatorial studies at Tufts University. So I'm on my way to Boston in about two months. What? Yeah, so that'll be good. So it's like creating anti-racist mm -hmm. um, and diverse curatorial frameworks. So in practice of actually putting an exhibition together um, as well as anti-racist curriculum for studying art history and museum studies. You know, it's probably like the two sort of main, you know, pillars yeah. of art. Mm -hmm. So how did you get, how did you get there? Right? <laughs> what, what is that? And I don't mean like, you know, was, was that no. you know, one of your track, but like, yeah. how do you get from point A of being a kid and maybe mm -hmm. like, liking a few things and then all of a sudden narrowing down because that's big like that's it easy is. work and so how did you get here it super is and it's like it's been such a winding 
road. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> have you seen that that Venn diagram that's like, you know, most of us think of success as like this linear, like uphill yes. line. And it's really this like scribble yes. scrabble of like. Oh my God, I would kill, FYI, side note. So we, I interviewed um, one of the co-founders of a, a women's like, basically what you're just talking about. It's called Own Trail. I'm gonna send you that link. But it, okay. you're finally seeing, you know how you see the man's trajectory? It's like that um, yeah. you know, hero's journey. Crap. Yeah. And so women are like, that's not relevant to me. So I would love actually to see yours one day, like your trail. Cause it's like here and wins, failures, loss, yep. win, failure. Like, it's just amazing. Yeah. Anyway, that was a little side note. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, so keep coming back to, so keep telling me how you got so there. So it started as like studying art history and well, I should say studying and being more specific. I should uh, study in African-American art history, yeah. right? And mining the footnotes of a couple of scholars' work, so like Richard Powell's work, Lisa Farrington's work, Jeff Willis's mm -hmm. work, and I was like, "There's so much work, right, that needs to be done." Because they would, you know, say in the footnotes, like, "So much more work needs to be done on this, or more research needs to be done on this." Um, and I said, "Well, this is something, you know, that I could do going into a graduate program in African American studies, because in an in this really interesting way." African-American art and art history exists in like its own little world. Yeah. You know, that's pretty much grounded in the HBCU. So Howard, Spellman, Clark, Fisk. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a there's some folks at, you know, um, Northwestern, right? There's some mm -hmm. people at Harvard, there's people at Yale, but it's not as broad, mm -hmm. right, as it should be. So where art history is really behind the curve, you know, in African-American art, so is Black studies, right? Yeah. <laughs> right? So is African American studies. So I had this room in my faculty at UMass when I said, you know, I really want to go into museum work. And they were like, well, you know, we, they typically like push yeah. us toward the senior track. And they were like, well, we have no idea. <laughs> you know yeah. how to help you get into museum work. But if you can figure it out, we'll support you. So at that point, I just started doing independent studies with different art historians in the area. So like, down in Boston, you know, over in Hartford, um, you know, through email, because this is maybe 2011, okay. you know, 20, okay. 2011. Um, and through that process, I landed um, my first position at the um, Birmingham Museum of Art. Okay. And I worked there primarily in African American art, but the, the current director, who was then curator of American art, really noticed my command, right, yeah. of like, applying critical race theory or applying anti-racist mm -hmm. framework to American art. And at that time I was still on the fence. Like, do I want to do contemporary? Do I want to stay with the historic? And his name is Graham Betcher. And so he was really pushing me, you know, toward the history. Cause he said, what you have, American art needs so yeah. bad. <laughs> and no so one's bad. doing it. Nobody's doing it. Yeah. Yep. So I started doing it there and we worked on a show together called Black Like Who? That mm -hmm. was about how blackness has been constructed in American mm -hmm. art from like early 19th century, like to the present. It was a like okay. really, um, it was small, but it was like a broad like survey show. Mm -hmm. And it was a piece in that painting, I mean, in that exhibition Jillian called um, A Race Meeting at Jacksonville by okay. a British artist, W.S. Hedges. And it was all about like free people of color Right, and how the mixing between the races in terms of social activity was a lot more lax in the port town. So Mobile, Charleston, New Orleans, right, than it had been in the South yeah. in the 1830s. So it's fascinating to me because I was like, okay, well, if this is a British artist who's basically just traveling the South, depicting, you know, this in a genre painting, right? Mm -hmm. The reality, you know, of like black and white social activity at a, you know, like basically a horse race. This is one painting in one institution, in one city, in one state. Mm -hmm. That's fascinating <laughs> to think about all of the paintings, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, and all of the institutions. So it really sort of like, a light bulb went off, right? And I was like, the narrative is wrong. So not only is like women artists of color have been like erased in the way, you know, from the canon, you have white male artists that have been mythologized, right? To the point mm -hmm. of fiction, 
because this is like a painting that nobody talks about in, in Hedge's career, you know, mm-hmm. so and then I so I did the little research and lo and behold, you know, find the same thing for like John Singer Sargent, find the same, the same thing for like Winslow Homer, the same thing for John Stuart Curry. And I was like, isn't this fascinating? <laughs> right? Or isn't this convenient? You know, so when I got to Panther, that was really my, the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine mm-hmm. Arts, that was really my um, goal because PAFA has one of the oldest collections of American art in the country. It's the oldest institution of American yeah. art, you know, in the country. And when I started doing the work there, you know, pulling out all of that history that had been, you know, quote unquote erased or ignored, the institution was not happy about it. Right. So then that made me think, I was like, okay, yeah, this, this is a problem. Mm-hmm. So now I'm going to set my sights on doing this, right? Yeah. <laughs> on doing this very thing. <laughs> yeah. And that's how I came to it. And it's interesting because Charles Venable, right, former director of Newfields, supposedly recruited me to Newfields, particularly, particularly oh, because of that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But not understanding the discomfort that yeah. comes with it, you know, when you're really invested in a particular kind of whiteness. Yeah. You know, and so that's, you know, that's kind of the beginning of the the, the drama, right? Right. <laughs> right. But it needed to, ha- I mean, it needed to happen. And so with, okay, so with that, and obviously I don't want to focus saying that that, you know, the Newfields thing was, was, was a linchpin kind of, kind of moment, but I'm curious, mm-hmm. I always ask this question and I bookmark it. So I'm curious to see where you go with it. Um, you know, where have you found and I should actually taking that question back a little bit, you know, it seems that a lot of your work is struggle just because white people it get is. comfortable, right? It is. So, mm-hmm. so pinpointing specific, you know, what have you found specific that's like struggle for you, but then where have you found that delight? Because I always want to end on a high note. So I get mm-hmm. that I'm asking a question that is, you're like, Juliana, all, all of it is. This <laughs> is why I moved out of the city. But, you know, what would that mean to you if I said this, if I asked you what your struggle was? For me, it's really, I was saying this to a, to a, to a group, I've been training um, museum staffs, you know, yeah. on stuff for the last year. And I was saying this to a group last week, that like, it's how personal it is, you know, where I had a moment in May of last year, when I was debating the res- the public resignation, mm-hmm. right, where like, I really just want to resign and go about my business, but I really couldn't. And I had this moment where I was like, this is the word, Kelly you know, the disruption, mm-hmm. um, the disc, the personal individual discomfort. Um, so like kind of putting myself, you know, out on the limb or out yeah. on the line um, is what the work requires, you know, and that part, right? <laughs> right? It was like that moment of like, oh yeah, this is actually how I have to do this, you know? And it's not totally like me alone. You know, but it does have a whole lot to do with just like my per- my person in the space, like my yeah. body in the space as a black person, as a black woman, yeah. you know, who's also like a scholar of all this stuff, like in the place. So like everything about me is disruptive, right? <laughs> right. Like my <laughs> presence is disruptive. And then I was like, that's the point. Yeah. You know, and it took me a minute, you know, to, to get there because it was like in that moment of like, okay, this is this is what you're getting ready to do, you know, here in Indy on on like this exit. But it was like, man, you know, it was, I did a similar thing in Philly. I did a similar thing in Birmingham, right? I did a similar thing in Massachusetts. So it was like, oh no, like this is just, that's the, that's it. (laughs) You know, it's not just simply an exhibition here or like an essay or a book there. It literally is me. Yeah. You know, for one person. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Cause you know, you do like, it's fighting the culture of um, not just white supremacy and patriarchy. Yeah. Right. But also like the culture of fear and silence mm-hmm. among my colleagues across the field. Um, overall, you know, there's only five of us, you know, who do this work and who speak yeah. about it very publicly. Um, and we, you know, we catch a lot of heat for it, but it's necessary because yeah. the, the upside of it is there's, there's an entire generation, you know, of curators, you know, coming behind us that are yeah. like, thank God, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know, that we're affirming in a way where they're like, yeah. yeah, I'm not crazy. 
you know, this is something that's happening. This is something that I see. Yeah, that was sexism or yeah, that was a racist comment. Mm -hmm. um, because the, the museum culture is very Twilight Zone, right? In that way where it'll be like, you can say the sky is blue and people will be like, no, it's really this like really interesting green. <laughs> it's very weird in that way. Um, and so it was that, you know, yeah. that was like the kind of um, solace. Yeah. Right. You know, where people were just like the emails that I get from people that are just like, thank you so much for saying it. Right. Or thank you so much for doing yeah. it. Um, or I saw this podcast or listened to this podcast as you did. And then I went to my boss and said what needed to be said, you know. Um, so it's helpful. It's hard, you know, yeah. but it is good. So where's the delight come from? The delight is like, I think it's like unearthing the thing that nobody likes to acknowledge. Right. Um, and the fact that once that's illuminated, it yeah. connects to so many more people than just like the kind of wealthy one percenters mm -hmm. in a museum audience. Right. Or, yeah. in, or, or involved. Right. In museum culture. You know, it just opens up. It's much more interesting. Right. So it opens up much more interesting stories. Yeah. That more people of any, you know, age, race, creed, ethnicity, class level, whatever can identify with yeah you know and that's the part that I love about it because people are like oh I never would have thought to look at you know an 18th century like you know porcelain tea service and think about you know my grandparents <laughs> yeah. you know or, yeah yeah you know or like my aunt you know that kind of thing it's like helping people identify it's like bringing people you know back yeah. to the objects and back yeah. to the experience oh it's so good um okay so how would you say so the last two questions, mm -hmm. um, like how would you say how the community can show up, whether that's indie in general, museum audience, worldwide, whatever that means to you, how can the community show up? Oh, that's, you know, that's a great question. Um, Cause I think they are, you know, this year um, in this last year, I think COVID and, you know, Black Lives yeah. Matter, you know, has really turned a tide on things um, and just being vocal you know, institutions have to respond, you know, to what their audiences want. Um, so leaving the comment cards, you know, writing the emails, you know, discontinuing the membership, you know, if, yeah. if you need to, um, and really telling, you know, institutions what they want to see. You know, yeah. oftentimes museums or historically, right, museums have been designed to kind of tell the community or tell the audience what they should want to see, yeah. <laughs> right? This yeah. is important, so you should like this. Um, and maybe it is in, you know, certain cases, but not every case, you know, so the difference is, you know, getting that, you know, critical mass yeah. of community voices. I said, no, this is this, we know what you have and this is how, you know, yeah. we want it to be presented. Well, I will say what you triggered in Indy, and I know it was lots of people, you know, there were lots of people that spoke right. up and did thing, but that is something I never as someone who worked in that institution, um, never thought was going to happen. Like knowing- I didn't either. <laughs> <laughs> ne never, it was- yeah, I, never did. I, I literally just sat back, I was like, I'm in awe of what just happened. Like it, it was so big and so important. And, and there are still people here very much holding them accountable. And I, I agree like keeping that voice going or change isn't going to happen but the power of the community for that was like goosebumps huge right because that was the thing that I was really shocked by yeah when I started like once I started the community work right because that's yeah. how I always start a position and it was all of this mess about or I wouldn't say mess it was like this murmur about me never being at my desk right so and I, I was like whatever <laughs> yeah. you know I do the work differently, get over it. Yeah. And the deputy director at the time did a really good job at, at like fielding, right? Or like shielding me from all of that. So once the show started happening, you know, the reinstallation of the um, rotunda, the Samuel Levi Jones show that I did with Brian Jackson, then mm -hmm. Brent and Tariq's community meal, you know, it was like the series of shows. <laughs> and the institution started like fraying, right, at the scene. So we could see it. One reason why I took yeah. the job is because people like Tasha and Britt and, you know, and Tariq yeah. were doing the work, you know, before I got there. And 
it was so fascinating where I was like, yeah, we have to do the work in a way that forces them to expose themselves. So we don't really have to do anything <laughs> other than like keep ourselves yeah. together, like protect ourselves, but, but just do the work efficiently. Yeah. And, and it will literally unravel, <laughs> unravel. And it did, you know, and it was also seeing and observing. Yeah. Just how tremendous, right? The indie arts community is yeah. as a whole. Yes. And how new fields exist as like this weight. Yeah. You know, that just is like this, um, my friend Denicia Monet um, describes it as like this, this ulcer you know, on like the larger arts culture. Yeah. And they had no idea, Jillian, <laughs> right? It's like, you all are like sucking the life, you know, out of this out of, out of this arts community, literally just by place because, yeah. because of how you're utilizing, you know, the space in such a terrible way. Um, and I loved watching the way that the arts community moved around it. Yeah. You know, and so I was like, there's an impetus, right? There's a momentum to a certain degree. The arts community doesn't even really need this institution. So that's where like my wheels started turning. Yeah. I was like, can I break it wide open? <laughs> you know, <laughs> to where the community can actually then use the space for what yeah. they it's meant to be. For. Yes. Right. You know, yeah. or not. Um, and it took a minute, <laughs> but it was like, that's what wound up happening. And I was like, get out of here. Yeah. So it was really wonderful for me. It was really like vindicating. Like people are always like, oh, do you want to talk about it? Are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, because it really demonstrated how, yeah, like what it looks like when the work works. Yeah. It was, yeah. I mean, I messaged you anyway. I mean, it was just on, I mean, it was just awe inspiring. I was, it was the, I just never thought it would happen. It was amazing. So, um, Let's do the big question and then I'll, and then I'll let you go back to your day. So um, how, Dr. Kelly Morgan, um, are you leaving your trace? Oh man, um, I think mentoring, you know, is my big thing. You know, mentoring yeah. students, mentoring those younger than me, mentoring even some of my colleagues. Yeah. You know, and just saying, and not necessarily like creating a whole bunch of little me's, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. But mentoring in a way that allows people to become, I always say like, I, I, I'm being my best self in a way that allows other people to be their best, to yeah. be their best selves. Right. So it's like mentoring in a way that helps people like stand in their own philosophies, you know, and to stand strong in their own beliefs, you know, in their own moral values. A yeah. lot of the, the, new field situation was me doing just what was the right thing to do yeah you know and it just kind of happened to align <laughs> with my academic training right and professional yeah. training it's like it really was just doing what needed to be done yeah you know thank you so much thank you thank for doing you. work I mean I hate that at times it rests a lot on your shoulders at, you know, without anyone else around but thank you for doing the work and the hard work and showing up and sharing your story and, and uh, just keep talking. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>